When it comes to computing moment of inertia of complicated bodies, there's help. Help comes in the form of a theorem, a wonderful theorem called the parallel axis theorem. Here's the setup. You've got a body and you're rotating it about an axis that goes through the center of mass. Now you want to know what happens if you translate that axis, keeping it parallel. How does the moment of inertia change? Well, let's say that I naught, I sub zero, is the moment of inertia about the center of mass. Then, to get the moment of inertia about a parallel axis, a distance d away, you compute that as I naught plus m d squared, where m is the mass of the body that you're working with. Let's call this translated moment of inertia I sub d. Okay, here's how we prove this. By definition, I naught is equal to the integral of r squared dm, where r is the distance to the axis going through the center of mass. What is I sub d? Well, by definition, that is the integral of quantity r plus d squared dm, because it's a distance d away from that centroid. Okay, so now all we have to do is expand out that integrand and use the additivity of integrals to break this up into three pieces. The integral of r squared, the integral of 2dr, and then the integral of d squared, all with respect to mass. Now that first term, the integral of r squared dm, hey, that's i naught. That's by definition, that's right there. And if I look at that last term, d is a constant, so the integral of d squared dm is just m d squared. But what about that middle guy? Oh, let's think about that. That middle integral actually vanishes since, by definition of the center of mass, the integral of r with respect to dm is zero. You're going through something that has average radial distance zero with respect to mass. Okay, that's the idea of the proof. You don't have to know the details of the proof so much as you need to know how to use it. So let's, let's practice that. Let's look at a simple case. Let's go back to a uniform density cube, side length s, mass m. Let's say that you're rotating that about a vertical axis through the centroid. Let's say that's the z axis. Then, as we have seen before, to get the moment of inertia about that axis, we simply integrate the distance squared with respect to mass. That's integrating quantity x squared plus y squared times rho, your constant density. All of these limits from minus s over 2 to plus s over 2, we've got that. That's an easy integral. That winds up in the end giving us ms squared over 6. Okay, great, that's the, the simple case. Now, let's say we wanna compute the moment of inertia about an axis that goes through one of the side faces, right through the middle of it. What would we do there? That would not be an easy integral to set up, but with the parallel axis theorem, we can say it's ms squared over six plus md squared, where d is the distance to the axis. Since that distance is s over 2, I square that to get s squared over 4, add it all together, and we get 5 twelfths m s squared. Now, for another example, let's take an axis that goes through one of the four corner edges. Then again, it's m s squared over 6 plus m times the distance squared. Since the distance to that corner edge is s divided by square root of 2, we wind up getting s squared over 2 times m, add it all together, you get 2 thirds m s squared. Now, if we step back, take a look at what we have computed in these three different cases and, and see the difference in the moment of inertia, you can see just, just how the parallel axis theorem is telling you how those moments are changing. As you go from rotating through the centroid to rotating about a side or rotating about a corner, the moment of inertia is going up, going way up. You can feel that viscerally. You can see it. And now you can compute it with the parallel axis theorem.